deeper in the uh, domain of uh, some physical properties like earth and uh, matter and so on and so forth, gravitational force and all. Then when it comes to chemistry, we are digging more deeper in the chemical part. That how exactly uh, there will be some reactions or something. In biology, we are digging more deeper in the life science part. Similarly, when I'm talking about data science, so it means I have some data and then I'm digging more deeper in your uh, data. Like suppose you guys gave me the marks, okay? The marks of each and every student uh, that they secured in the entire year based on whatever tests and exams you had. Now, first and foremost step would be that I should understand the data first. Now, it may happen that, okay, the data can have some 10 rows. I'm talking about an Excel sheet, a normal Excel sheet, okay? So that Excel sheet can have 10 rows, 20 rows, 40 rows, 100 rows, okay? And then 10,000, 60,000, millions of rows and so on and so forth. There's no limit to the data, isn't it? That's why uh, like uh, when we started, when we started this um, workshop, then there was some data provided by Miss Minty from Clever Team to you guys and from your teacher to, uh, to you all, right? Related to me or something. So the point is, we don't know that in what amount we have the data, but we definitely have going to have the data to play with. Okay. And that is the head start. So what happens? The story starts with data science. We get some data, we, we can either make it or we can get it from internet or somewhere. Today, uh, when we'll go further in the workshop, I'll provide you with the data. Then we need to first understand it because the challenge is you don't have to open it at all. Because see, right now when we are practicing, it can be a small data. It can be a data of some 10 rows or 20 rows or 50 rows. But when it comes to the real life problem statement of artificial intelligence and machine learning, the data can be huge and we cannot afford it to open in our local machine. OK, so the point is the way we have Excel as a tool in order to see what type of data we have. Similarly, we're going to use the Python programming language as a tool. So we don't have to open it with the help of Python. We'll read it. OK, we'll understand how many rows and columns we have. Are there any columns that have some missing values because we cannot afford to have them? OK, and then ultimate our ultimate aim would be that in case you have certain issues, maybe there will be some duplicated rows, duplicated columns, how we can process it in order to make it ready to use. OK, that will be the aim of this workshop. Now, why are we doing this? Because once you are done with the data science step that when you have the data, once you have understood that what is the story behind the data and how is it behaving and if there are any issues, once you fix it, then you can use it as the training data set to your machine learning model where the machine will learn something. OK, once the machine learning model is ready to use, then we are using Python programming language. We are using the concept of machine learning whenever both machine learning and Py programming language meet then we can say we made an AI based project. So see, the three domains are interlinked. They are not same, but they are not different as well. It's just output of one domain is input of the other. Output of data science would be input of your machine learning. And artificial intelligence is like a huge ocean where machine learning is a small part of it. But the point is, whenever we are talking about machine learning or artificial intelligence, the data, the training data set is very important because if you won't have the data, nothing will work. The whole story revolves around the data only. So that's what we're going to learn about today. OK, so let me just share my screen first. Just me one second. So uh, see, I'll be sharing uh, like I'll just share my screen and we'll make the project. And then I would suggest each one of you to do the same so that because at the end of this session, uh, there will be one feedback form share where there will be a column where you need to give the project link. OK, for that, everyone has to make the project. OK, so. Please let me know if my screen is visible, students. Yes, ma'am, it is visible. OK, I can see clearly. OK, so uh, students, before we start, I hope um, majority of you have some basic idea of Python programming language, is it? How, are you learning in your school or somewhere? Yes, ma'am. Yes, what about you, Kashvi, Eva? 
have you learned any programming language before ma'am only html yet not python only html okay see any language is very easy it's all about how well we are understanding the concepts okay now when it comes to python then it's like collection of various functions now there are some functions which are pretty much straightforward like print we call them base function because you can just write the function name use them and it they will work perfectly fine but there are several functions that are stored somewhere like we have libraries in our school the collection of books so it's like whenever you want a book from your library you cannot just go and take it to your uh, like go over there and bring the book and bring it to your home no right you need to register somewhere isn't it is this what's happening in your school as well you need to write somewhere your details and all who is taking the book which book and all yes or no yes yes ma'am yeah so similarly here in python we have collection of libraries and in order to use certain functions we need to call the relevant library like in this session because we going to play with a data so whenever you want to go with the data science thing and ai ml and all that stuff there is one library which is most commonly used which is pandas okay the name may sound funny but i haven't named it so generally whenever people import pandas because it's like a five letter word and they feel like okay who will write five letters let's just write only two so generally they give a short form to pandas as pd but it's not mandatory you can you continue with pandas or you can give any other name but generally people use as pd okay so now first and foremost step is saving the data i'll whatever link i am sharing i am using over here i'll share the same with you all on the chat later okay so first of all i need to just read my file so here in this link i have my data already stored now see because i imported pandas as pd that's why here i wrote pd okay and then i use the function read underscore csv why because the link that i have the data set that i have it's in the form of csv format so what do we mean by csv it is comma separated values that is if we it has three columns it has something like this like suppose it has name and then it has uh, the location you are in and something else what what shall we write maybe uh, it's talking about date okay so here different columns are separated with comma that's why we call them csv if it would have been normal excel instead of comma it would have been separated with tab that's the difference okay now because i have used my csv file i need to first check whether the data has been loaded properly or not so for that i'm using one function known as head so it's like head as in top right so with the help of your head function it will by default print the top five rows so with the help i mean once you are done with reading the file you can always use the head function just to check if the data is there or not so see i never open the data i just use python as my tool in order to perform this function so i am sharing this link on chat the data set link that i am using i request everyone to open google collab you can just search for google collab on your uh, or maybe i'll just share this link so on the chat the second link is the place where we going to write the code it's uh, the name is google collab so you can just open it maybe it will ask you to sign in so please sign in using your google account let me know once you all are done with until this part so that we can just move ahead simultaneously so first step is opening the google collab research project and then second step is using the link that i shared in the first place uh, just read your file and print the top five rows that is the head
and i would request everyone to maintain the decorum of the workshop it's very important students it's really important to maintain the decorum uh ma'am uh, you are the host of this meeting can you please uh, switch off the chat for every student yeah ma'am the link that you have shared we have to paste that right Yes, you can just uh, paste the first link inside the read underscore CSV function. Make sure that you uh, paste it in quotes. Okay, I'm sure. Just let me know once you are done until this step, so that we can move ahead. Uh, ma'am, actually, I am doing it from the phone, so I'm not able to open the website. I don't know. There's some problem. Um, so are you using Chrome? Yes, ma'am. So just uh, try using the desktop function. Maybe it will help you out. Okay, ma'am. What about the rest, Kashvi, uh, and um, Abhishek? I'm almost done. Almost done. Okay. Brinali, Chinme, Sharvi. Uh, Just let me know once you're done. Priya. Ma'am, I'm using phone, so that's why I'm, it's not happening. Just try whoever is using phone. Try with um the desktop version and see if it will help you out. Ma'am, it's showing that uh, this server can't be reached. I think this has been displayed on my screen. Yes, ma'am. Same here. Using phone. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Since it's phone, uh, I don't think so it will help you out much. It's okay. You can just uh, see how the things are going. Whoever is using laptop, just let me know once you guys are done. Just understand whoever is using phone and not able to play like play around. Just understand what the things, how the things are being done. Okay. Okay. Shall we move ahead? You wish Ashna, Dave, Eli, Eliza. Ma'am, it's Alicia. I'm so sorry. Alicia, shall we move ahead? Who said that that person is almost done? Are you done? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So see, students, using head, I got the top five rows. How do I know that? By seeing the row number. It's like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Similarly, I can use the tail function. Python is being too obvious, head and tail. To print the bottom five rows. See, now the numbers are changed. The row numbers are changed. So with the help of your head and tail, you can just make sure whether it has the data set that you're loading, whether it has loaded correctly or not. Now, suppose you want to see that, okay, what exactly are different types of columns? Is like if we are seeing all the columns or is there anything which is hidden or something? You can just write data.columns and print all the column names. Now, see, there's a difference. There's a difference between head and tail and columns. Here, I give brackets. Here, the brackets are not there. 
so what happens whenever you write a function no matter whether you are giving anything inside it or not if if it's a function name you there have to be brackets okay but when you are writing any attribute then you just write it directly no brackets at all are needed now there's no uh, hard and fast rule that this will be a function name and this will be an attribute name it's just comes with the practice uh, you'll just get to know that where to use and where not to use that's it okay now there are more things that you can uh, just play around suppose you just want to know that how many rows and columns are there in your data frame okay so for that you can just print shape so it's telling 404 rows and eight columns so like this using various functions and attributes you can just inspect your data that is you can understand your data now once you feel like that okay i have enough information you dig you have digged a lot in the science part and now you know your data in and out thoroughly okay so the next step would be just to understand that are there any columns which have some missing values or not now why exactly uh, is this important because whenever we are talking about this machine learning giving the training data set and everything it we cannot afford to give missing values it will create problem so we need to pre process it so in order to understand whether we have missing values or not we can just use is null dot sum so here i'll get all the column names and in front of all the columns see how many missing values i have i have like 11 missing values in almost all the columns and in one of the columns i am db reading i have like 222 missing values so they'll create a lot of problem okay so we need to delete them we need to delete the rows which are having the null values so for that we can just simply write data dot drop na okay so inside the brackets of drop na i am writing in place equal to true because i want this deletion as permanent so i'll just use the same function over here just to make sure whether the rows and columns wherever i had missing values whether it has been cleared or not so can anyone tell me are we uh, now so have we got rid of the missing values now yes ma'am yeah because all the uh, uh, like after the drop in a function now when i use the same command now all the columns are having zero missing values so the problem has been taken care of so until this point it's all about data science what you are doing you are just understanding the data and you are fixing the issue as well like in science it's not just about understanding that how it goes in the life science how your um, all the system in your body and in plants work or whatever it's about understanding and fixing the issue right so whatever we are doing it all comes under the data science column but the final output like here i deleted the rows okay and now i am like confident enough that i don't have any missing value or not now my data is basically ready to use as an input as a training data set to a machine learning model so the final output of your first step that is the data science step would be the input of your machine learning okay so that's how they are interlinked all right so now the data set is like prepared now there are three functions which are really important when we are handling this data that is unique and unique and value underscore counts first of all all the three functions cannot be applied on the entire data set there has to be one column that need to taken care of so i have like eight columns um so name of the show doesn't makes any sense if i want to print the unique values every name of the show will be unique anyway same goes with the serial number maybe we'll get something with year of release number of seasons it's like prime tv shows right so anyway the maximum of them would have maybe one season so uh, again doesn't makes any sense language will help you out a bit maybe genre may also help or maybe age of the viewers can also help so basically like this by seeing what column names you have what type of column you have you can just make a decision suppose let me just go with the language because it's like most safest column to use of all so what i will i do i'll just write data now there are two ways either we can write like this i can write them my data frame variable name here i read the file with data right so i'm just using data everywhere so one way is 
that I'll just give square brackets and write the column name. And another way is we can just write like this. Give a dot and write the column name. When you are giving the column name inside the square brackets, we need to give them in quotes, else don't give it. Okay. Now the first function is unique. By seeing the output, can anyone tell what is this function telling us about? Ma'am, in which language the shows are used according to the sequence? Okay, Kashvi, you want to add something? Um, in a language which we use in, in languages. So basically, our data set was about uh, various shows which are present in Prime videos. And language column is just telling that um, in which language the show is. So using the unique function, as uh, Eva was also suggesting, it is just telling what are the different languages in which the shows are. Okay, so it's like we had 404 rows, but the unique uh, languages are only some five to six. Okay, so now suppose we want to see the count. So I'll just use the same function. And instead of unique, I'll just add N over here. So now can anyone tell what is it representing? Ma'am, how many number of languages are available? Number of unique languages are available. So and unique is like number of unique values. That is correct. And then there's one more function. That is value underscore counts. So what is this suggesting now? Ma'am, that uh, how many number of shows in available are available in the respective languages as inside of them. Yeah. That is correct. So we are getting the frequency of occurrence. So here we have all the unique values and out of 404, 155 of them are in English and then 17 one of them are in Hindi and Japanese and so on and so forth. Okay. Now until this point, Maybe you guys know about the technicality about giving the function and getting the output and so on and so forth. But what if you want to under make the same understand to a person who doesn't know anything about coding or input output thing? Like suppose you are just showing this stuff, okay, to a person who doesn't know anything and the person will also not even know that, okay, what is the function and where's the output? Or maybe what if you all needs to make the presentations, right? Maybe for assignments and you um, made an assignment on your programming language uh, using some Python programming or HTML programming language. You made something and you want to present it. In that, nobody will see your code, right? What if your code is too long or is too short? Okay, so the point is whenever we are making any project in data science or maybe artificial intelligence and machine learning, we have one concept of data visualization, which is really important because when you plot something on graph, then you don't have to, uh, you know, um, explain much. It is self-sufficient. OK, so the next step would be uh, like uh, whatever uh, output we got over here, making sure that we are vis uh, visualizing the same thing using graph. OK. So the way we were using the pandas library in order to handle the data, similarly, in order to plot, let's just use one more library known as cpod. Now there are various libraries like people import uh, matplotlib dot plot as well in order to plot. But I mean, it's all about what type of graph you want to make. Okay, so it can be anything. It can be either this, it can be either that, anything. Now, suppose the function that I want to use is belongs to your Seaborn library. That's why I'm using that. And I have given a short form as SNS as well. Now, over here, we have a function count plot. So can anyone guess by seeing the function name, what exactly uh, will we be plotting? Count plot, what is it suggesting? What exactly uh, would be the output? Something related to counting? Will it be like the number of languages as you've written language here? The number of languages, let's just see. So, what is your output? That uh, how many shows are available in which language? So it's something similar, right, over here. But see, if you are showing this graph, 
if you are showing this to a person the person may get confused what exactly is happening or maybe where to look shall i look over here or shall i look over here what is happening but here it's pretty much straight forward right that what is the language and how many counts we have okay now by seeing this plot anyone can conclude anything that okay english is the most um, here in this particular data set english is most widely used for shows and all okay so from getting the data to just doing all the relevant changes whatever are required understanding it how exactly the number of rows and columns are, how many number of rows and columns are there or um, what was the what else did we saw how many top five and bottom five words are there and how many row columns are there with missing values then we uh, made sure that if there are any null values we took care and then we visualize it everything comes under data science because here also what are you doing you are just seeing the type of data uh, that you got and then you are making some conclusion out of it that okay english is most commonly used in the shows thing okay so what is data science just dig as deeper as you can and if you find any issue just fix it output of this data science like now until this point i had my data variable the output of this data science will be the input of your machine learning that is something else some uh, like there you just entered in some another domain okay so data science is understanding the data and making it ready to use prepare it in a way that you can give it as training data set to your machine learning model from the machine learning model the i mean the program will try to capture the pattern from the data that okay suppose if i have some data set of marks of all the students and their respective marks in every subject and i want to predict that who will um, be um, holding the first rank at the end of the year so it will just understand the pattern and then based on whatever set of marks i am asking that okay now you understand to the pattern now you tell me that if someone marks are 90 80 70 and 60 will that person come in the first rank second rank or third rank so based on whatever pattern my date my machine learning model understood it will give me the answer so the output of data science would be input of ml and because everything is in python programming language i i wrote all these in python programming language right and uh, your machine learning model that we make again using some of the codes we're going to make that so because everything is in programming language along with the concept of machine learning so together they come under the column of artificial intelligence okay are we clear that uh, between the difference and how interrelated the three domains are yes ma'am yeah now uh, please let me know whoever is uh, uh, using laptop are you done until this point until visualizing the plot and if you are finding any issues do let me know so that i can help you out with tell me vamika vamika tanisha abhi sir are you are you using laptop sanvi anand mama me using phone are you using phone see whoever is using phone just try it once if it's not working then it's you leave it but if it's working on some phone just uh, try it out mama i tried it thrice but it is not working it's okay it's okay it's okay all right uh, now um, are we done shall i move ahead students yes ma'am sure okay so uh, maybe the other link that i am sharing maybe it will help you out so see uh, what i was talking about that okay here until this point we are done with preparing the data let's just see how exactly this model work now because we have limited time i'm just using one external website in order to um, give you a feel of it okay so maybe you can also try it out at your end maybe this will work on phone i've sent the link on chat so the moment i opened this website i just clicked on get started and then i'm going to try it try without registering okay then let me just add a project name maybe demo or something It's okay students you can just see my screen first and then you can try it out later okay 
So I'm just giving a project name demo and then I'm just selecting the recognizing as text. And then I'm just clicking on create. Just remember, we are using this external website just to see that how exactly our machine learning model works. OK, so suppose I want to make a feeling detector. So I'll just write happy in one label and sad in another label. And then I'm just writing some five words each. Can anyone help me out? Just give me some five words. Maybe I can write good. Give me some five words related to happy mood. Mm -hmm. Joy, joy, Joyful. happiness and Hopeful and I'm excited. Excited. One more. Um, hopeful and what is it, Kashi? Hopeful. Hope. Okay. All right. Five words done for happy, and now similarly, give me five words each for sad as well. Ang anger. Anger. Bad. Confused. Bad, okay. What Upset. else? Upset. Oh, did I misspell that? Yeah, I did. Mom, upset. Okay, upset. One second. I can, I'm not okay. Upset, what else? One more. Two more. Okay, what else shall I write? Did I write Andy? Okay, sad. All right. So I'm done with five words each for happy and sad. Oh, Mom, you've written upset wrong. <laughs> Sorry. Just write upset. Thank you so much. Okay. So I'm done with five words each now. You're welcome. Giving the training data set, like when I went to the train rep, it's like attending any class. You may or may not remember whatever you learned in the class. You have to always come back and revise. So I'm just coming to learn and test and clicking on train new machine learning model so that my model can exactly capture the pattern. It can just understand what are the five words each that are having in a uh, happy and sad mood and what are the words related to them. Okay. So right now it's training. Once it will be trained, then we can just make a test, take a test. Okay, I'm just a minute. This website is working on the phone, so I'm also doing that. But you just did. I remember what we did. Okay. Eva, let me know once you're done with clicking on train new machine learning model in the learn and test step. Okay, ma'am, just a minute. So meanwhile, who's observing, can I have a sentence belonging to happy or sad mood just to test my model? How about great? Great. I think I wrote great, right? Ma'am, actually, uh, I have written those five examples. What do we have to do after that? So once uh, you're done with five each for both happy and sad? Yes, ma'am. So you have to tap on back to project on your top left and come to learn and test. Okay, ma'am. And then scroll down and click on train new machine learning model. So I wrote great over here and it said that it's 86% confident that I'm happy. Give me some another word for happy or sad mood word just for testing purpose. Come on, students, give me a word or a sentence. How about hmm? Tell me who was speaking. Uh, Ma'am, I was saying how about unhappy? Okay, unhappy. 
So see, I don't think so. I wrote unhappy. Maybe I wrote upset and all. Since it's still saying that it's eighty percent con, eighty seven percent confident and it's sad. So the point is based on whatever words I gave. When I clicked on learn and test, it captured the pattern, and it didn't even just remember the those five words each that I gave for happy and sad mood. But it created its own library based on these words. How it is creating and all? It's like another story. This is what something that we learn in machine learning that once you have made the data ready to use and um, you know um, now you want to go with the machine learning model part. How exactly you want it to understand? This is what people learn in machine learning, different algorithms and all. So that's another story, a background story. But the point is, as soon as you give the data, the machine learning model captures the pattern, and then when you are testing. According to whatever pattern it has captured, it will give you some output. That's why we are focusing on the data because if data itself is not correct, then the model will not give you the correct answer, right? So we need to be we need to make sure that the data that we are using is like the perfect data that all we can get, so that the model can work perfectly fine. Now, right now the model is working uh, perfect, right? Now, what will I do? I'll just go with Python programming language in order to make the AI based project. So I just request everyone to just um, see what is happening over here. I don't know if it things will work on phone or not. So I just went to uh, make a project with Python, and the first step that I'm doing is I'll just copy this API key. Okay, and then let me just run the Python in browser. So now, obviously, because we are using the model, we would require certain base code. So that I just clicked on for prepare. So I'll have some code, some template code already generated, so that I can use my model and I can just do whatever relevant changes I wanted. Excuse First me, ma'am. Yes, tell me, Eva. Ma'am, the Python thing is not working on the phone. Rest of it worked. It's okay. It's okay. Just uh, see my screen. Okay, so first step was uh, changing this thing. Okay, and then the second step is that I want the user to give me the input. Suppose I can just ask the user, "How are you feeling today?" I'm using the input function, which actually takes the input from the user. And now, whatever input the user will give, it will be stored in this variable test underscore text. Now the user should know what exactly are they supposed to write. That's why I just wrote a question inside the input function. Now let's just run until this point and see how the things are happening. Okay, so I'll just write great. Suppose so right now it's just telling the same thing what we were visualizing over there. Now with the help of this base code, we can just change the project. Something like suppose I can just give some condition. That if the label, uh, I need to see the exact spelling that I gave. Everything is small. Okay, so if the label that I gave, if it's exactly equal to happy. So see what happens. Suppose Kashvi and Eva are talking to each other, and Eva asks Kashvi that how are you feeling, and Kashvi gave a reply that would either depict whether uh, Kashvi is having a happy mood or a sad mood. So if Eva has detected that Kashvi is having a happy mood, then Eva can say maybe nice to hear that. And if it's like uh, maybe Kashvi is sounding sad, maybe Eva can ask what happened, or maybe just say things will get better. So see, students, here what is happening when I'm running the code? It is first asking me the question. So suppose, what should I write? What shall I write? Disappointed. Something, okay. So based on whatever class label it is detecting, the model that we made in the previous step, based on whatever is the output, it is giving me certain reply. That if the output is happy, it is saying something. If the output is sad, it is saying something else. Now here in this project, it's not like restricted. It's not like that. If you'll work, if you'll write only those five words, then only it should work, or else it won't work. It's not like that, right? Because in your model you have already created your model, and the model has created its dictionary uh, that whatever happy and sad mood words will belong to these two domains. So no matter whatever sentence, whatever word you will be writing, it will give you a certain output. Because over here 
coding and machine learning are meeting. That's why we can say it's an AI based project. So again, and I'll just return back from where I started. What is data science? Where you get the data, understand it, pre-process it, visualize it, just to see how exactly your data is and make it ready to use. Once the data is ready to use, we uh, use that data in order to make a machine learning model. Once we test the model and we feel like that the model is working the best, perfectly fine, then we can use any, uh, like we can use it with some code, right? With some Python code. And whenever coding and machine learning meet, then we can say we made an AI based project. Are we clear on this, students? Yes, ma'am. Any questions, any doubt based on whatever we did over here or uh, before in the Google Collab thing? May I ask, ma'am? I'm sorry, Kashvi, do you have any question to ask? Uh, just a little. Tell me. If you can type undisappointed, then what will happen? Let's see. see. That's the point. Even I don't know what will be the answer. Let's see. Undisappointed is giving nice to hear that. Okay, see, that's what I give some five words each. I don't know. Uh, there can be some uh, test case where my model will also not work. I don't know. Because we just gave some five words each, right? That's why I'm saying from the beginning, data is really important. No matter whether you want to go for data science or maybe uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Because as you can see, data is like the starting point. Without data, we cannot do anything. Like if we don't know the English language, we cannot understand what we are talking right now, right? So that's what data is like the head start. If your data is working fine, if, if your data is like um, having no issues, then your model will work perfectly fine. Else there will be a problem. Okay. Any other questions, students? Not really. So uh, just as for the conclusion, the story started with artificial intelligence. Like what is artificial intelligence? Whenever machine or robot can think like a human and take wise decision like humans. Then how exactly can they think like a human? Because along with coding, they have machine learning model in them. The concept of machine learning model is used. Now, what is machine learning model? Whenever we give some data to our machine, the machine captured the pattern and we can take a test just to see whether it is working perfectly fine or not. Now, when we are giving the data, we cannot give it directly. We need to make it ready to use. So we use the concept of data science to read our data, understand it, uh, do all the relevant changes that we want to do. And once we feel like that is ready to use, then we can go ahead with making the model part. Once we feel like that the model is working perfectly fine, we can use it with any Python program, any coding language. So whenever coding and machine learning meet, we can say we made an AI-based project. Right, students? Okay, cool. So on the chat, Miss Minty will be sharing the feedback form if it's not shared yet. Yeah, she has just shared right now. So I would request everyone to please fill the form. So students, you hope you all had a very insightful session and I'm sure you will, uh, you can gain more knowledge if you can join uh, with us in future. However, meanwhile, please uh, fill up this feedback form. The link has been shared in the chat box and that will enable you to get certain discounts as well. There were certain other messages in the chat box. Please uh, follow the same. If you have by any chance missed, on, missed them, you can just take screenshots about the same. Please note that this uh, feedback forms basically will uh, enable us to share a certificate of appreciation with you, which will definitely add on to your portfolio.
Thank you, Tanisha. Please let us know, students, mm -hmm. once you're done with the feedback form. So that was Vanshika, ma'am, right, ma'am, from GBS? Ma'am, are you here? Uh, excuse me, ma'am, I filled my feedback form. Okay, Great. thank you, Eva. Ma'am, I have also filled my feedback form. That's really nice. Ma'am, I also filled my form. All I right. I also filled. Thank you. So I think Miss Vanshika left the call. Thank Probably you. she's not there. Well, anyways, no problems. Uh, so thank you, children. Thanks for your time and sincere participation. It was really nice to have you all. And I'm sure you would want to, you know, dig more and more into, into this topic. You can definitely contact uh, on the numbers or share, uh, you know, your views on the email ID, which was shared in the chat box. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Fine. So we end the session over here, I suppose. Uh, and I Yes, please. Would, would I ever see you again? So this was a one-time workshop from Clever. You can, as given in the chat box, if you want to join any further courses regarding AI, you can please contact on those numbers. Definitely the participants today present in this workshop are directly eligible for huge discount. So for that purpose, you need to, you know, actually subscribe on our YouTube channel. Then you can just follow the Instagram page and also fill up this feedback form, however. And thereafter, you can just, uh, you know, you automatically will get eligible for the discounts and you can contact for the purpose of joining the courses on the numbers, which has been shared in the chat box. Do you want me to reshare that message? No, I'm, it is already there. Right. Yes, All can see, correct? Yes, ma'am. Visible to all. Yes, ma'am. Great. So, uh, any other queries? I wanted to ask, uh, what yes. do we have to write in the name of workshop in the form? So, your title of the workshop was Science of Numbers. Okay. Right? Are there any other queries, children? So we assume that everyone is uh, sorted and there are no more queries. Again, I'll just, before ending the session, thank you all for your sincere participation and have a great day further. Thank you, everyone.